welcome back to Rebels and Revolutions. My name is Yulia and today we will continue to explore the Ichigerin Revolution, also known as the First Chechen War. Click the link below if you wish to see the first part of this episode. As you may recall from our first episode, in October 1991, Dudayev was confirmed as president of the newly created Chechen Republic of Ichkeria and immediately declared the republic's independence. This declaration led to a civil war within the republic as Moscow-funded opposition groups fought with a new Chechen government. Curiously, after realizing that the attempts to finance Dudayev's opposition forces are fruitless, Yeltsin used regular Russian troops disguised as Chechen opposition fighters to dislodge Dudayev's government. To be fair, one cannot present this aggression by Russia in purely black and white terms, as Dudayev was becoming increasingly dictatorial in his rule, slowly allowing Chechnya to become a criminal marketplace, where anything including heavy weapons, drugs, professional hitmen, etc. could be obtained. This clearly presented a considerable danger to the safety of the Russian Federation. Add to this some very damaging actions against the nascent banking system in Russia, and Yeltsin's desire to put an end to the newly independent republic began to make a lot more sense. Even inside Chechnya, several districts Rioni, have declared their allegiance to the Russian Federation, while the opposition forces were conducting an open warfare against Sudayev and his supporters. In August 1994, they bombed a telephone station and the Moscow-Baku railroad line, and Sudayev's government introduced a state of emergency, followed by martial law in September 1994. On December 10th, three divisions of Russian armor, pro-Russian Chechen infantry, and internal security troops invaded Chechnya. The result, however, was a long series of military operations bungled by the Russians and stymied by the rugged guerrilla forces of the Chechen separatists. At the start of the first Chechen conflict, Dudayev had nearly 265 aircraft left behind by the Russian army when it evacuated Chechnya in 1992. I have always wondered what Russian military genius decided to leave all this hardware in a republic with a long history of hostility towards Russia. These included a large number of combat trainer aircraft, a few MiG-15 and 17 fighters, and eight helicopters. On December 28th, the Russian government ordered ground forces to start an operation to liberate Grozny and disarm the illegal armed groupings. Dudayev's supporters vowed to continue resisting and switch to guerrilla warfare. Troops that were sent to Chechnya had, in many cases, only just arrived for their mandatory conscription service. As a result, they'd only been through about half of what US soldiers would consider basic training. The Russian military moved into unfamiliar mountainous and wooded terrain. It encountered intense ambushes and tactical retreats by experienced and determined Chechen forces. The Russians, still underestimating Chechen fighters, proceeded with a disastrous New Year's Eve offensive on Grozny. Confused and disoriented Russian conscripts were decimated as they entered the city, with 2,000 killed or wounded within the space of only 60 hours. Chechens fought in small groups, focusing on destroying the first and the last vehicle in the Russian convoys that were snaking through the narrow streets of Grozny. Once that was done, Russian tanks and armored cars were completely immobilized and became an easy target for the defenders of the city. In January 1995, Russia poured in reinforcements, bringing its forces to 40,000 for a renewed assault on Grozny. Noting the inferiority of their troops, Russian commanders sought to employ a new strategy of systematically destroying Grozny block by block with air and artillery. While this tactic, however brutal, ended up being successful, Russian progress remained slow, with the Chechen rebels emerging from their shelters to ambush Russian forces before retreating. Finally, by February 8th, the last Chechen fighters were driven from the city, with appalling civilian losses of 27,000 killed in Grozny alone. Consequently, this method was repeated across Chechnya's towns and villages which were systematically obliterated to root out defenders as Russian forces advanced. With some 90% of the Chechen territory under Russian control by April 1995, these actions broadened the support of the rebels, unifying various Chechen fractions. 
given the scale of civilian casualties in Grozny. In fact, the Battle of Grozny represented the largest urban military engagement in Europe since World War II, Russia lost most of the goodwill on the international stage. Chechen rebels, meanwhile, were reinforced by bands of hardened Mujahideen from all over the world, many of whom fought Russia in Afghanistan less than a decade earlier, and the war became even more brutal. Next time, we will follow this episode to its bitter end and see how the first war sowed the seeds of the second war in Chechnya. Thanks for taking the time to watch, comment, and subscribe. See you very soon on my channel, Rebels and Revolutions.